Welcome to Scorched Earth and a general mid-month reading for the sign of Sagittarius, Sun, Moon and Ascendant. For the 15th to the ooh, 28th of February. It's going to be shorter than the main monthly readings because obviously it's just covering that two week period and the structure is slightly different to what we cover in the main monthly readings in so much as for the purposes of this reading what I like to look at is where you are right now, what is the energy that you are in and then look for the lesson. Right. What is the um, the lesson of the energy that you're in? What is it trying to teach you? Sometimes it's trying to show you something. Other times it can be preparing you for something new that is coming in. But in whichever way it falls, I just think that it's it makes it easier to navigate things that could be potentially challenging if you can see the reason for it. So I hope that that makes sense. <clears throat> just as an uh, addendum, I have done um, a six month overview for 2021 for each of the signs that is still available. It's on Vimeo. There's a link down in the description box in there. So if you're interested in that, hop along and have a look. And let's have a look. They're quite long. They're like hour and a half plus. So worth the money, I think. Can you tell me where Sagittarius is at right now? Please? Whoa. Three cards all leapt out together. <sighs> do I just keep those or do I pull some more? Let, what? Let's pull some more. I'm going to try not to pull any clarifiers in this because I like to keep these nice and short. The first three cards that you've got come out are the Nine of Pentacles, the Queen of Swords and the Queen of Cups. And that's a really interesting combination. I have to tell you, when I did the meditation on the Sagittarian energy before I even started the camera rolling, what I saw were pentacles, shit loads of pentacles, right? And, and almost like laser-like focus on these at the moment. But the Queen of Swords and the Queen of Cups gives me an indication as to why that should be the case at the moment. Let's get the Sagittarius energy, please. Six of Swords and the Page of Wands. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. We have the Ten of Cups at the bottom of the deck. That talks about emotional fulfillment, right? But more than just yours, it talks about a collective emotional film fulfillment. And we have the world at the bottom of the deck. And I can't tell you how much these cards are tying into exactly the feelings that I was getting in the meditation. So, <clears throat> and why the fixation on the pentacles? Now, do remember that the pentacles don't necessarily indicate money, although they absolutely can. It's about resources, energetic resources, of which money is absolutely one. But there are things like your time and your care and your effort, you know, whatever you choose to, to invest Right? If you're in the act of investment in whatever way that that is, then that's what we're talking about here. So we have the Nine of Pentacles, Queen of Swords, Queen of Cups. <clears throat> this is about self-sufficiency and independence. Right? The, the Nine of Pentacles is someone who can take care of all their own needs. It is resource management in some ways as well. But this is not having to depend on anyone for anything. Right? It's taking care of everything all by yourself. And the reason that I said it felt like a laser-like focus was not only is this you know really really important to you but the queen of swords and the queen of cups tell us why it's important to you as does the ten of cups here actually this isn't pentacles for pentacles sake this is this is purposeful there is something going on here with you and it's like a means to an end at the moment you know Sagittarians get a bad rap for being a bit scatty sometimes and and like to be fair you can or at least perceived that way by other people because they don't really understand how it is that you work and you, you kind of humble right you're a centaur you kind of canter about and you do these things but when you have got a goal in mind that focus is like nothing else it's like you can let that arrow fly and and you will go straight to it you don't need to see it you can feel where it is and you're all so very focused at the moment because because the queen of swords has told you that this will lead to this right it's it's that got a plan and now in the act of executing it at the moment and it's more than just you it's for other people too um there is something very emotionally fulfilling at the other end, but there's the tying up of a cycle that's going on here. So whether you're looking to move out of somewhere that you're, you are, you know, whether that's a house or a situation or whatever it is, or into something, 
there's a collective well-being in mind here. And although the end game is emotional, the way that you're going about it is highly logical, very, very practical. Okay, absolutely fixated on this. We've got another card here that talks about moving away from an old situation. Right? Remember that we had the world card. Oh, I've just noticed the temperance is underneath there. That's your card, Saji. Okay. <clears throat> you are pulling an end in here. You are trying to achieve some sort of completion so that you can move away from something. Now, 2020 was a kind of rough year for you in places. <clears throat> There was quite a lot of introspection, but there were some very definite endings. This feels like the tying up of these endings in order to bring in the new beginnings. And that feeling is really, really strong. So, you know, whether you're just, you know, pulling extra shifts at work to kind of amass a bit of money so you can move house or you can, you know, switch job or you do whatever it is. Maybe we want to start a business, something like that. You can see how it would apply across the board. But there is a determination and that's really strong, a determination that this is all going to close out now because you want this new beginning. And it's borne out even more by this page of wands. Now, this doesn't have a strict astrological correspondence, certainly not in the way that I read the cards, but it always feels quite Sagittarian to me, right? Because it's excitement. It's that, it's a fire sign excitement about things, right? It's the possibility of new experiences. I've actually noticed it as I'm talking to you, I'm right, my, my knee is rattling away down here like a there's an excitement about what is to come. <clears throat> and this is where the focus is coming from. This is why you are really powering through at the moment, because you want to get far away from whatever the Five of Swords situation was as quickly as possible. But it's not fleeing. This is the thing. This is not this this way that Sagittarians are sometimes perceived, where they kind of run away from anything that is committed. There's actually a sense of, of a larger commitment in the future that you're trying to get yourself into a position that you can make. By tying up all the loose ends from whatever got shaken loose in 2020, if that makes sense, with such determination, a real clarity of thought, right? That Queen of Swords is absolutely driven to bring about this completion. Oh, I love it. Right, let's have a look and see what the lesson is, what this is preparing you for, you know, however it goes. Such, please, four of wands, now. two of swords, but not up front. What's that? Ah, oh, eight of swords. Now this is interesting. <clears throat> We've got the six of cups here, and that is the past. Right? Sometimes it can be soulmates, that's possible, you know. It might be for some of you that what ended last year was a relationship with a soulmate, although by the end it didn't feel like soulmate stuff. But remember that, that, that all the soulmate designation is, is like a, a prior commitment to teach each other something and, and you learned a lesson, probably in a fairly unpleasant way, but you learned it nonetheless. We have the four of wands here. We also have this, and this is interesting. I said it didn't come up in the upright and it didn't come up in the in the reverse either. It came out sideways and that feels important to me. And we have the Eight of Swords here, right? I feel like these two cards are really, really connected because what the lesson of this energy is or what this is trying to teach you is, is a form of empowerment for sure. Remember how we talked last year about how, how there was this this schism that had occurred between how you thought you conducted your life and then what the reality of it was, in so much as we had um, Sagittarians present with very good boundaries, right? That's something that you're kind of born with this innate in, uh, ability to, to um, understand and execute that other signs don't, right? So in terms of your day-to-day -day dealings with people, you're really, really quite good at enforcing your own boundaries. But we noticed that there was a gap in the fence. And there, when it's people that you really, really care about, actually, they can get under your boundaries and then they sit in there with you. Now, because you've assumed that you're really good at boundaries, these people are here. And the last thing that you want to do 
is be in conflict with them because actually Sagittarians are pretty conflict avoidant, right? <clears throat> and so you ended up somewhat squashed over the course of whatever this was, you know, uh, and it could be work or it could have been a relationship, whatever. Yeah. And part of what you really, really struggled with was trying to work out how it was that somebody managed to do that. And more than that, how you allowed them to do it and allowed them to perpetuate that for such a long time. That's where these cards come in here. I'm going to skip straight to these two because I think that they're important. We had this feeling of being trapped. We had this feeling of being frustrated, but we also had this Sagittarian, this is my life now, I have to make do. Now, 2020, you made some phenomenal changes, really big shifts that you actually never saw in a month Sundays that you would do. <clears throat> and part of it was because you realised that you did not pay that much attention to your emotions, right? We, we had these emotions being packed away in a box and kind of shifted off to one side. You were always working on the logical and you never paid attention to the emotional. That was because the situation that you were in didn't really give you the capacity to do that, right? Your emotions were not valid. Your input in something or other was, you know, not required, essentially. And so that's the way that you worked. But what ended up happening was that you trapped yourself in your own mind because of this resilience, actually, is what it is, an ability to be able to endure that Sagittarians have when they're dealing with people that they really care about. You kept yourself there, right? And that thing that keeps coming back and being like, holy shit, I kept myself there. I did this thing, right? Now this card came out like this, and I feel like that's important because this is a midway point. This to me says no longer making decisions purely from an intellectual basis. And actually going, you know, really getting comfortable with consulting your emotions about how it is that you do things. Um, <clears throat> how it is that you understand what is going around, or, or, you know, going on around you. It's like the opinions of, of most people don't really bother you at all. But, but when it is people that you really care about, that shit runs deep, you know. And so when they start behaving in, in such a way as, as it, um, you know, as it seems that they had been doing you know, prior to 2020 and probably actually throughout 2020, what you did was internalise that, a lot of it, right? Kicked all the, the important emotional stuff to one side and just, just, just kept it in a box out of the way, but decided... That this is how things had to be right <clears throat> now this process is shifting you right it's shifting you from ever trapping yourself because we know that like, Sagittarius is completely allergic to being trapped and this is the thing that really shocked you the most was that you allowed this to happen you you were so deep in it that you didn't notice that you were deep in it right so you've been hauling yourself out over 2020 but now there is this shift occurring where you don't put yourself in that position anymore and part of that is getting open and honest about your feelings but being able to to be around people who are comfortable with you expressing those things right who are not gaslighting you who are not trying to repress you who are not trying to put themselves first in front of everything you know now we want to get to this point and I do feel like that's where you're going Saji but at the moment it's still a kind of tentative thing <laughs> But look at this. I love this. This is the Four of Wands, right? This is the celebration card. It's the home card, actually, for me. You know, if you, if you had something really, really good happen, who would be the people that you would want to share that news with immediately? Who are those people that you know would share your joy? That's who is indicated here by these cards. But it's sort of an abstract state of being, too, because it isn't just about the people. It's about the relationships with the people and it's possibly about, to some degree, the material circumstance that you find yourself in at the moment, right? This is the creation of a new foundation and this is what you are trying to bring in here by closing out the old, in whichever way it applies. And what the lesson is, is that this has always been within your power. And actually you knew that, but you were never really living it to its fullest, fullest extent. This is the introduction of you doing that. To wit, if you are doing something money related, specifically money related, 
whether it's investments, whether it's you know getting another job, pulling extra shifts at the job that you've got, you're going to get a good return on it. Right? You, you are going to be able to achieve what it is that you're setting out to do because it seems very unlikely with this alignment of energies and the determination and, and the way that everything's going up here that, that you wouldn't be shown that you control your life and that you can make happen anything that you want. It's actually a demonstration of your manifestation power. That's what's going on here and that's what's being taught to you, but not just on the financial level. It's just that the financial level, possibly, certainly the energetic level, it's allowing you to trust that you can manifest whatever it is that you want. Oh, I like that. So. Let's have a look at some advice, although honestly, it looks like you've kind of got it going on here. Can I have some advice for Sagittarius? Oh. We have the Eight of Pentacles, we have the Knight of Cups, and we have the Moon. Ooh. That's really interesting. We've got the Page of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck now. That is another card of a new start in the material. Somehow, some way, somehow, you know, making something new happen. And I really like to see all of these new cards with all of this, um, you know, wrapping up energy that we've got going on. Now, what came out here with this Eight of Pentacles is Three of Swords in reverse. That's about healing. For me that's about gravity doing its thing and pulling those swords out right you can't heal around metal you can't heal around something that is cold there's great healing for you in what it is that you're doing now right and and the more driven you are to succeed in what it is that you're doing it's almost like more healing will come to you because it's kind of like this feedback loop right that's what you're starting to get into now <coughs> and every little success that you have here just emboldens you a little bit more to keep working at what it is that you're doing. And like I said, it might have nothing to do with money at all, but there's something very rewarding on its way in for you. And, and for some of you, that could be money. For others of you, it could be just a true sense of purpose. I know we all prefer the money if you like we asked. But <clears throat> but if you've got that true sense of purpose, then the money will just come anyway, you know? It's so it's kind of swings and roundabouts of this. We've got the Knight of Cups. Right. And I love this because you've got the Queen of Cups there too. It's a real opening up, right? Continue that process. Continue to identify what is important to you, right? Don't fixate on the means of getting what is important to you. Like maybe you're saving up for a house or something like that, right? The end game is not the money. The end game actually isn't even really the house. The end game is being able to be in your own property, you know, that you own, that nobody can fuck with you because you're in there by yourself, you know, or in there with your family, you know, that's the thing. That's what you're aiming for. Everything else is a means to an end, right? And, and remember that, keep that in mind. And be open, right? be open with your heart about what it is that you're trying to succeed. And be open with, with that new level of emotional understanding that you're getting of yourself. It's like, it's been such a tentative exploration, but there's, your confidence is increasing with it and so these little returns come in and as you trust those little returns these returns are getting bigger and bigger and bigger <clears throat> the final card that you've got is the moon and this is interesting because the moon talks about the things that are hidden right? and, and for me um, I like to come at things from a slightly Jungian perspective. So for me, it talks about the shadow or it talks about the um, the non-conscious or the subconscious. It's the things that are hidden from you specifically. right? And I think that you've only been working at a, at a partial capacity for quite a long time because your internal space has been quite quite busy you know you've had a lot of things going on outside of you but there's been a subconscious processing of things that's been going on and, and, and almost like a like a non-conscious healing 
that's been occurring. It's almost like you get to check in with it every now and again, and it's like, oh no, it's, it's still going, it's doing things, but things are shifting. I can feel things going around inside. Why this is important is because because as you open up the full extent of what is inside you and available to you, and things that you're not yet really even aware of at the moment, your capacity for manifestation will grow because there's an alignment going on, not just with the inside and the outside of you, but, you know, <sighs> think of yourself like a tube, you know? You've got the whole power of the universe flowing through you, except that you bottlenecked it at times, emotionally. Imagine the possibility of being able to open that all up and let come through what's coming through. <sighs> Fucking cards flying out everywhere here. Come and take them because they all seem important. We've got the Magician and the King of Pentacles. All right, that's, that's the pinnacle of active pentacle accruement accruance accruity gosh who knows right <clears throat> you are a really pan powerful manifester and what it is that you're trying to manifest will absolutely come to pass because you are going out actively and looking for it <laughs> we've got the ten of cups down here we've got the knight of pentacles right you've got really really clear about what is important and now you are doing the work to bring that to you you know to enable this all of this because this is what you want and you know what it's going to look to some people like it's dropped in your lap and that's absolutely not what's happened here they'll have no idea just how much you've worked for this and you know what that doesn't matter it actually doesn't matter because you don't care about what other people think remember and you actually don't well, And the people whose opinions actually matter now, and you have a far better idea of who those are today than you did this time last year, will understand and appreciate exactly what you have done in order to triumph in the way that it looks like you're going to. God, the determination is real. Right, I'm going to leave it there. Um, I hope that this has been useful for you. I Fucking fair play. I, I really, really like this. Okay, know that I love you all very, very much and I'll see you soon.